200 frames a second in 4K, in full resolution. There's a reason why Canon don't do many 4K cameras yet. Hi, welcome to Creator Answers. And in this video, I'm going to be explaining all about crop factor. What the heck is a crop factor? Why do you care? And why does it matter to you as a YouTuber, as a video creator, what a crop factor is? And before we get into it, if you're new to my channel, you want to be kept informed of all the things that I put out there, hit that subscribe button, hit that alarm bell, and you'll be notified when I put a new video out. So let's get straight into it. What's a crop factor? Okay, in the past, a standard camera on a standard roll of 35 millimeter film would have a frame the size of a piece of 35 millimeter film. If you've seen old film cameras, you know what size that is. So that's regarded as the standard frame size of a camera. In the early days of creating digital cameras, creating a sensor at 35 millimeters was very expensive. The early digital cameras were tens of thousands of pounds. They were really expensive and they sold like six. Okay. So what's happened is people have made special lenses, cropped sensors, which are much smaller and are much, much, much cheaper to produce, which is great. They're also faster, less pixels, less density. So the processing power in your camera required is less. So cropped sensors came about because A, in the past in particular, making a full frame sensor was extremely expensive, eye-wateringly expensive, not only for the sensor, but for the hardware to drive a full frame sensor. So that's where cropped sensors came from. Now as we've developed and things like video has become you know a huge sub-use of digital still cameras or all digital cameras we're finding that a cropped sensor actually brings its own advantages. So even though it was originally seen as the cheaper option or go for a cropped one it's cheaper it actually has some advantages over a full frame sensor. Now just to make this live for you let me put this little graphic up on screen. So this shows you the largest part of the image here is what you would see if you took that picture with a full frame sensor. And then as we can see we can go down to like a Canon or a Nikon cropped sensor. If you're using this on an APS-C, C for crop this is a cropped sensor. Things like, you know, the Rebel Canons or the 6500 series Alpha Sony's, Nikon's, they all, uh, you know, do that 1.5, 1.6 crop. Then we see the Micro Four Thirds crop, which is what I'm using right here on the Panasonic Lumix range of digital cameras. And right in the center, we see something like a, you know, a compact camera sensor, like a GoPro or, um, you know, your phone cameras typically have a very, very small sensor in them. So that's the kind of shot that you will get natively on these cameras. Now you will have, you know, some of the lenses can be, will change accordingly to compensate for this, but typically that's the sort of cropping. That's what a crop means. It's a crop of a 35 millimeter, the original old school. Now, a lot of photographers, especially professional photographers, will want nothing but full frame. And if you're doing professional photography, you're going to want a full frame camera. That's fine. And even for video, I use an A7 III for other shots because I want a full frame look. I want that detail, that color, that the things that come with a full frame sensor. But there are also sacrifices. By comparison, a small sensor like a Micro Four Thirds camera will have a much higher frame rate. You can do a lot more with the pixels because it hasn't got to be driven so hard. The advantages of going for a smaller, uh, a cropped sensor like the one you're watching here is 200 frames a second in 4K, in full resolution. There's a reason why Canon don't do many 4K cameras yet because they're so expensive. I mean, Sony are ruling this, but if you compare as a video camera, the Sony a7 III, which is a brand new Sony camera, fantastic camera, versus the GH5, and look at the features and the type of video things you can do. The GH5, as a strict video camera, blows the a7 III out of the park. The a7 III is extremely good in a very tight series, in a very tight niche at what it does. And as a full frame video camera in 1080 or 4K, it's beautiful. But forget high frame rates, forget some of the autofocus features don't even work properly at that resolution. You know, you have to turn things off to let the camera do that. Whereas the GH5 or the Micro Four Third sensor, smaller sensor, much easier to control. Everything still works. Everything. It's it's insane. It's awesome. You know, there's always a balance when you're picking out your crop. And that's pretty much it. That's lit. It really is as simple as that. So a crop sensor just means the sensor is literally physically smaller. Now, when it comes to using lenses, you can interchange them, but what you'll find is things like really bad vignetting at the edges where the edges become blurred, or even the point where they just 
just black out. It's not even usable. So you need to make sure that you're getting the right lens for the type of camera that you have. And also bear in mind, if you're new to this and you're still deciding what camera to you want, if you go with full frame, you need to stick with full frame lenses. Uh, for example, this is Sony's A6500. Wonderful camera, absolutely brilliant, but it's cropped. It's got a much smaller sensor than the A7 III. However, um, as a run and gun, this is a nice little camera. It's light, it's fast, but the lenses are specially designed for a crop. So keep that in mind when you're choosing the camera, what a crop actually means for you. And remember that once you start down that path, you need to stay on a cropped sensor or a full frame sensor. You can't really change your lenses around that much. Well, I mean, you can, but there are downsides to it. So that's pretty much it. That's all about crop sensors. That's how it'll affect you. Have a look before you decide what you're going to buy. Do you want the full frame, you know, and prepare to sacrifice on some features? Or do you want all the features and get reduced cost? Sometimes usually reduced cost, but sacrifice the benefits that come with a full frame camera. Keep that in mind. So I hope this was useful to you. As always, please like, comment, share, subscribe. Give me a feedback below, dislike, it's all good. And popping up on the screen right now are my previous video and uh, the next most relevant video. So go ahead and click on those if you want to see well, more of my content. As always, thank you so much. I shall see you in the very next show. I love you guys.